12 o'clock. Welcome to the webinar, everyone. I'm Wallace Johnson with Families Helping Families. And we are here today to do uh, the Early Steps Potty Time Training Webinar. And this webinar will be posted on Facebook and YouTube. And um, so please be mindful of that. If you have any questions, we would like you to use the chat box and put your questions in the chat box for China. And we'll be monitoring that so we can answer questions if you have any. At the end of this webinar, there'll be a survey that'll pop up. We ask you to please complete the survey at the end. Um, this will help us as we try to do future webinars and training. Um, this webinar is one that there's always a need for. Um, and so China does it, you know, frequently on a regular basis, you know, at least once a year, if not more. And she can do it by request. So if you need this webinar again or know somebody that needs it, you can contact China. And with that, I'll turn it over to her. And China, take it away. Thank you, Wallace. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for um, taking time out of their busy day to um, fit in with us to get some information on potty training. Um, I'm hoping that um, the information that's presented today will be useful to you all. Um, and like Wallace said, um, um, I do this particular uh, training pretty often. And um, if you do need a uh, this training for future um, needs, just um, send me over um, an email and we can go ahead and get something um, down in the calendar books. Um, if you have any questions that you may not be able to think of now, at the end of this webinar, my contact info will be listed with my email address. Um, you can always just send me um, an email um, and I will do my very best to, um, to get back with you within 24 hours. Um, and with that said, we'll go ahead and we'll get started. Okay, so um, LACAN is Louisiana Council Advocacy Network. Um, it is a grassroots network. Um, it links lawmakers, individuals with disabilities, family members to make positive change in system serving people with disabilities. Um, it also advocates for policy and systems um, that supports inclusion. Um, everywhere people learn, work, play, and live. Um, it advocates for systems that supports children and adults with disabilities to live in their homes, to be fully included in participating members in their local school, schools and communities. Um, LACAN leaders provide connections with a regional teams of advocates um, providing information on uh, policy changes and those changes may affect you and others. Um, we also provide um, trainings and skills to effective advocates for system changes and support you to link with um, policymakers. Um, if you are interested in being a LACAN member, um, there is a link. Um, Wallace will go ahead and put that link in the chat box. Um, so if that is something that you're interested in um, participating in, the only thing that we ask is that um, you make phone calls or that you send emails um, to legislators or policymakers um, for system changes. Um, potty training your child can seem like a mystery. <laughs> 
and a daunting chat and a daunting task for children and parents. But in reality, it's just another self help skill. Um, a child is considered to be potty training when he or she is able to have fewer than three toileting accidents of any kind within a one week period. Um, when I originally started um, this potty training uh, workshop, um, it was not to my knowledge that it was a self-help skill. Um, I just thought of it as something that we as parents had to do. Um, it was just something that, that needed to be done. Not thinking that it was a skill that needed to be taught to our kids. So once I started um, with this particular training and learning that it was a skill that needed to be taught to our kids, that came with a little bit more tolerance um, and a little bit more patience. So it kind of helped me in that particular area. So hopefully that can help you, you know, with that particular knowledge. <clears throat> When is your child ready? Hmm. Your child is uncomfortable in wet or soiled diapers and want them changed. Your child has developed a, a predictable element uh, elimination schedule and often stays dry for two to three hours at a time. Or your child is able to get on and off the uh, on and off the toilet with minimal or no assistance. Um, so typically, um, I usually tell my parents when your baby starts pulling that diaper off and saying, um, or you find that diaper laying off in, in, in the corner somewhere and that baby's running around the house um, going full naked, it's time for potty training. That's when you know. Or if that baby can come to you with a diaper in the hand, it's time. It's time for potty training skills at that particular moment. <clears throat> when your child is able to put two or more words together to make a complete sentence, or if they can tell you that their diaper needs to be changed. Um, if your child is increasingly able to take off or put on their clothes. Um, so that's also um, indications that also lets you know that your babies are ready to, um, to be potty trained. Um, so with, with words, they have to be able to put those words together. Um, they have to be able to say potty. They have to be able to say, uh, I need the potty. They have to be able to have um, the um, articulations to be able to put those words together. Um, or comprehension in, in, in being able to put those words together and being able to know and being able to understand that they need that elimination and it's time to go to the potty. So when they can have that understanding and be able to put those two things together, then that's an indication that they, they are ready and it's time for potty training skills. Okay, other indications to know when your children are ready. Um, it's when it is time to start potty training, when a child consistently shows two or more of these signs of readiness. For most children, this happens sometimes between two and three years of age. Parents are discouraged from beginning the process before 20 months of age, when your child's nervous systems and bladders and bowel muscles may still be um, immature. So that is for, that's the reason that, that they recommend that you wait until at least 20 months of age, so at least two years old. They, um, they recommend that you wait um, until that age to start potty training because they want to make sure that your baby's bodies are ready um, and has come to some type of development 
um, to where your child can say, yes, I'm ready for potty training or that they can recognize that they are ready for potty training within their own self, that they know within their body that they are ready. Um, so they, they, can, they can feel the difference within their bladder and within their bowels that they are ready. And that usually happens at about two years of age. Okay, consistency. Um, oh, let's go back. Um, don't begin potty training when there are other major events happening in your lives. Once you do begin potty training, keep moving forward. At every opportunity, let your child know that you are confident that he or she can master this skill. Um, so if you have a big life event going on, like if you know that you are getting ready to, um, to move into a new home, then you're going to be packing, you're going to be moving, you're going to be focused on that and not so much on the task of potty training. So that's why they're saying that um, they want you to be fully focused on potty training. That needs to be your main priority. So everything else needs to be um, set aside whenever you're ready for potty training. Um, that needs to be main focused. Um, so keep moving forward um, at every opportunity and what they're, what they're trying to say by this and what they're trying to explain by this is um, sometimes we have falls. Sometimes your, your, your babies may um, have accidents um, more often than, um, than they had the previous weeks. And sometimes that happens um, and that's okay. So don't be discouraged by that. Don't let that discourage you. That is part of them learning that skill. That's part of them learning their body. Um, sometimes having to, um, to learn those new skills takes time. That's not something that, that we can say that's going to develop and, and learn over a two or three day period. So um, we're, we're, we are asking them to, to recognize things in their bodies that we have never, ever asked them to recognize before. So with that said, we need to be patient as parents. We need to be understanding as parents. Um, and we need to in, um, show confidence in them and to, um, to show them that, yes, you can master the skill. Yes, we, we do fall as we do in everyday life, um, but eventually that skill will be mastered. <clears throat> okay, so daytime training. While most kids get the basics down in the first two or three weeks, please know that it may take a good six to eight weeks before you can consider your child to be fully potty trained during the daytime hours. So this is just strictly daytime. We're not talking about nighttime. We are talking strictly daytime. So what they are um, talking about with this particular training, what, what we are trying to express is that we break up potty training into day and night. So if you're, if you're going to start potty training, then focus strictly on daytime potty training. And um, so that way that when your child is potty trained fully in the day, then you can move on to nighttime training. So um, just as long as you know that um, it will take at least about eight weeks before they are fully fully potty trained for daytime hours. Um, so, and it takes about um, the first two or three weeks to, you know, to get down just the basics. So it, 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 it's a task, it will take some time. Okay, for bedtime training. Nighttime training, uh, many kids take another 
four to eight months or longer before they can stay completely dry at night. Given this timeline, it is encouraged to wait and start the process when your family can give the focus that it deserves. It is suggested that you want to wait until your child's muscles and nervous systems have matured at the point that their diapers is only slightly damped or even mostly dry by morning time. So um, once you're willing to start the nighttime routine, routine then you want to um, start that once you see that, um, that they're mostly dry by morning time and um, that it will take some time for the nighttime routine. Four to eight months, that is, that's a while. So um, we're going to be nighttime training for, um, for a while, for four to eight months. So um, we have to be patient, we have to be diligent, and we have to be mindful um, that our kids are learning that particular skill to, um, to be able to use those muscles that, that we're encouraging them to use. When your child's diaper is mostly dry in the morning, pick a day to tell your child that you're going to stop using diapers at night. Um, limit or eliminate um, their liquid intake for, um, for one to two hours before bedtime and have them go to the bathroom just before bed. Um, I know for myself, when I potty trained my son, um, I stop fluids two hours before bedtime. And um, I did have him use the bathroom just before we went to bed. And then in the middle of the night, um, I would wake him up and take him to the bathroom. And then in the mornings, once I woke him up in the mornings and I would take him to the bathroom as soon as I would wake him up in the mornings. Um, and so that was our routine. Um, for nighttime training. And it really did take us about four to eight months, um, if not longer, um, before he was fully potty trained at night. My son um, is diagnosed with autism, um, so it was something that we did have to work at. Um, but I did encourage him and did um, inform him that this is something that he was going to get, that it was just going to take time um, and try to motivate him as much as I could um, because I did not want him to be depressed or to think that this was something that he would never be able to achieve. So, um, so I encouraged him um, as much as possible. Um, and it's something that, um, that we as parents um, have to do for our kids um, more often than, um, than we think. <laughs> so, but, but yes, yes, it, it did take us a while for, um, for him to fully be potty trained at bedtime. And that's with us going three times um, a night um, to the potty. So, so it, it did take a while. Okay, uh, so bedtime routines. If your child wets the bed more than two or three times in the first few weeks, you may want to teach him or she um, to get up during the night and go to the bathroom. So like I said, this is the method that I used um, because my baby was, um, he was a heavy wetter. Um, so that gave me the opportunity to um, have him go to the bathroom just before bed, wake him up in the middle of the night. I woke him up, I guess, about 2, between 2 and 3 um, a.m. I woke him up, I took him to the potty, and then in the morning, once he got up, he went right back to the potty. Okay. So have a plan. Yes, I set a start date. Uh, about two weeks before you begin um, your plan. Talk to your child about potty training. 
talk to your child um, and tell them um, what is going to happen so that they can know what your expectations are so that you can tell them, okay, this is what we're, we're going to do. Um, every two hours, mama's going to take you to the potty. Um, we're going to, um, we're going to sit there for like five minutes, um, maybe 10, and I'm going to have bathroom toys um, for when you're in there to occupy your time. Um, so um, we need to have that particular conversation with our kids so they can be aware and understand what the expectations are. Okay. Also meet with your child's primary caregiver. Make sure that your child is consistently showing signs of readiness at home and at school. Come up with a plan that is consistent between home and school. Make sure that everyone involved in your child's life is on one accord. Everyone needs to be on the same page. Consistency is key. I cannot say that enough time. If you get nothing else from this webinar, this is what I want you to get. Consistency is key. Everyone has to be on the same page. So if your baby's going to school and you're on a two hour routine, the school needs to be on a two hour routine. If your baby goes to daycare and you're on a two hour routine, the daycare needs to be on a two hour routine. If um, you and dad are no longer together and the baby goes to dad's house on the weekends, you want a two hour routine, dad needs to be on a two hour routine. If um, goes to grandparents' house, you want a two hour routine, grandparents need to be on a two hour routine. Everyone needs to be on the exact same page. Um, I learned that the hard way. <laughs> so I want to save you the trouble of learning it the hard way. Um, for me, I am the disciplinarian in, um, in the household. And so I had, uh, my baby on a regimen of two hours. Dad did not stick to that regimen. Dad was like, he goes whenever I take him. And if he cries enough, um, to be put in a diaper, he sure will get in one. <laughs> so um, for me, daytime took a little longer to potty train because I was not on the same page with dad. So I had to have that conversation with dad and explain to dad, if we do not want to keep buying diapers, then we need to be on the same page. So once I put it in a financial um, understanding um, that he could grasp, then yes, we were on the same page. When he realized that that means that um, the longer it would take for me to potty train, the longer he would be buying diapers, <laughs> then for sure we were all on the same page. So yes, consistency is keep definitely if you learn nothing else from the webinar consistency is key everybody needs to be on the same page okay routine 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 there is a great comfort in routine especially for young children before you begin potty training try to come up with a schedule um, for going to the bathroom when you first begin training, take your child to the bathroom every 20 to 40 minutes. You may want to try reading a book or singing a song to encourage your kids to sit longer. Do not make a big deal out of going to the potty. Instead, save the excitement for when um, they have um, succeeded the first few times. That um, will show them um, with praise that, that at that time you can shout with them with praise and attention. Um, for me, I thought 20 to 40 minutes was a little excessive, um, in the beginnings. Um, so that is why I did not do that. I did every two hours. 
Um, but it is, it really depends on your particular child. You have to know your baby and you have to know your baby eliminations process. So I knew that I could go about an hour and a half to two hours with my baby before that elimination would happen. So, um, so yes, you have to know your baby to be able to say, yes, I can do 20 to 40 minutes or I can actually wait till about two hours and do a, a bathroom run every two hours. Um, so let's see what else <clears throat> independence when your child is done on the toilet have them wipe their own bottom as much as possible flush the toilet wash their hands um, you want to encourage your child to be independent as possible with this process um, which is very very true um, and the reason that I say that is because you do not want your baby to be um, four, five years old, still potty training, and your baby's bending over for you to clean them. That is a little excessive. So um, please try to encourage that independence as much as possible. Um, and the only reason that I say that is because um, I am saying that from a parent's perspective. Um, my child, um, as I said earlier, had autism, so it took us a while um, before he grasped the knowledge of potty training. Um, so it was about maybe six, about five and a half, six years old before he was fully, fully potty trained. And I did not want to be wiping his bottom um, after number two at age six years old. So, <laughs> so yes, yeah, so I did encourage independence at a, at a very young age. Um, um, I did have him washing his hands, uh, trying to clean his bottom, flushing the toilet, um, all of those things. Um, a word to the wise though, do not leave them unattended while they wash their hands. They love playing in the water. Do not leave them under, uh, unattended while they're flushing the toilet because they may have other items in there. Um, just FYI. Um, remember, I'm a mom. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so yeah, so um, encourage independence as much as possible. Okay, let's talk about rewards. Um, parents are discouraged from using reward, um, using materials good to reward toileting success. This is another example that could be hard to maintain over the years. On the other hand, many families find it helpful to have special books, toys, activities that are reserved only for the bathroom and really encourage children to spend time in there in the first place. So um, what we are really trying to say here is do not start a reward that you cannot continue. So do not say that every time you go to the bathroom, we're gonna um, get ice cream. That may be something that we cannot continue. Um, ice cream may get a little expensive having to go to McDonald's and get an ice cream cone every time he goes to the bathroom and um, be successful at that. Um, or candy rewards um, that may get a little expensive um, doing candy rewards. Um, so we, in, we discourage those types of rewards because of that reason. Trying to maintain that over a long period of time can, um, can get pretty expensive. So um, as I stated earlier with my particular, um, with my particular situation, um, I did do this um, like what they, um, encourage with um, special books. My baby loved books. Um, so I had books in the bathroom. I had toys in the bathroom. Um, I had coloring books in the bathroom. So um, I even had a radio in the bathroom because um, he loved music. 
Um, so all of those things I had in the bathroom, but they were only for the bathroom. So they did not come out of the bathroom. Um, and that's what they were saying about only reserved for bathroom time. And that's because if that child has access to those particular items all the time, how will those items be considered a reward? So just something to think about. Um, so only have um, special items reserved just for the bathroom. So I did that. And so um, whenever he would go to the bathroom, he was excited about listening, uh, listening to music while he was, while he was in the bathroom. Um, because uh, I'm not much of a, of a music person. Um, so I didn't really like have like a radio or something in the house all the time. We listened to music in the car. So it wasn't something that, that he had like at his disposal. So, um, so he really did enjoy having that radio in the bathroom. So that was one of the things that I used to my advantage. Um, as well as the books. I knew that he loved books. So um, I would take him to uh, to the Dollar Tree and I'll, you know pick out like five or six books. Um, and then those were the books that were um, reserved only for the bathroom. And so he, he enjoyed those and it worked. So, yes. Okay, keep your child involved. Take your children to the store for he for um him and her to pick out their own um underwear. Buy lots of them. Um make sure that your child has lots of extra clothes that he or she can easily put on or take off themselves. Um keep your child's cubby at school stocked. Uh, or daycare stocked up with one or two extra changes of clothes for a day, um, or um, a set includes shirt, pants, underwear, socks, and shoes. Um, so yes, um, definitely keep them involved as far as like allowing them to pick out their underwear. And they say buy lots of them, um, which is very true. <laughs> Do buy a lot of them um, because that will come in handy. Um, um, but I do want you to know that underwear, um, is very expensive when, uh, when you are buying them, um, just so that you know that the kids' underwears are, um, very expensive, um, when you start buying them. So, um, you're swapping out one pricey item for another pricey item. <laughs> So, um, extra clothes, um, definitely. I did learn the hard way about the socks and the shoes. Um, in my kid's cubby, I did have the shirt, the pants, and the underwear. I did not have the socks and the shoes. Um, my baby did come home one day with um, wet socks and wet shoes from a uh, head start. So um, I did have to learn it the hard way. So yes, definitely add socks and shoes into the cubby. Okay, pull-ups. <clears throat> pull-ups are strongly discouraged. Um, a pull-up feels like a diaper to a kid. As long as he or she is wearing it, um, they are less likely to use the potty. Um, the resist, uh, resist the temptation to put your child a diaper or a pull up, um, because it's easier, it's faster. And sometimes it's a lot cleaner than potty training, which is, is true. It is a lot easier. It is a lot faster. It is a lot cleaner. Um, but we have to remember that if we do not potty train, um, we will be, um, in the process of buying diapers and pull-ups for a while. Um, and I did just say that buying the kids underwear are a little expensive, but buying pull-ups are a lot more expensive than buying underwears. Um, so yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, the other thing that I did wanna um, mention 
with the pull-ups is um, with the the pull-ups and the diapers. Um, the purpose of the diapers and the pull-ups is when your child wets, it it pulls the wetness away from the body. That's how a diaper works. It pulls the wetness away from the body. The pull-up works the same way. It pulls the wetness away from the body. So that's why it says in this particular slide that a pull-up is like having on a diaper because it works the same way. It pulls the wetness away from the body. So if you have on a pull-up, a child will not recognize the difference from wearing a pull-up and wearing a diaper. They will not. If you have a pull-up on, to them it's the same as saying I have a diaper on and they will not be encouraged to go to the bathroom in any way, shape, or form. So put those underwears on them because that wetness will be on their body and they're less likely to want to have that on. And that is what um, will help them say, I need to go to the potty because they do not want that wetness on the body, okay? So um, that's the difference between the diapers, the pull-ups and the underwear, okay? Okay, be patient, keep a sense of humor. Um, as you venture into potty training, know that it will take some time. It will be messy, um, and you should expect the unexpected, definitely. If your child is like most, this is the time that he or she will be asked to control a bodily function that we have uh, never asked them to ever think of using before. Um, your child will look at you um, for your reaction as he or she figures out the physical, the emotional, and the social implications of toileting. So um, what I learned um, from my mom about being a parent is that um, children want to please their parents. We want to make our parents happy. That is what we want to do. And it's the same thing with your own kids. So whenever they use the bathroom, um, whenever they make a mess, they're looking at you to see what reaction you will give them. So if you're mad and you're yelling and you're screaming and you have this particular face, then that child is going to be standoffish about potty training. They're going to be less likely and more resistant to wanting to um, use that, that bodily function because now they see that as fear. You know, okay, every time we talk about potty, mom is mad dad is mad, they're screaming, they're yelling, they're, you know, their, their faces is just mad. So they will see that reaction and will be less likely to want to go to the potty. But if you come to them with a more um, sympathetic and a more emotional um, expression, and a more understanding expression and be like, it's okay, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. It's something that you have to learn and be encouraging and, you know, and smile and say, you're gonna get it. Then that child is not gonna be afraid to come to you if they have an accident. They're not gonna be, be afraid to come to you um, um, if, if, um, if um, they, they go to the bathroom and they, they miss the potty, you know. So those are the things that, um, that we have to keep in mind is that our kids are always trying to please us, always. And they're always looking at 
our reaction to see how we will react to those different aspects um, in life period um, so those are the things that, that, that we always have to um, kind of be mindful of so um, I know one particular time um, I took my son to the potty and my phone was on the other side it was in the living room and I left him on the potty to go and grab my phone because it was ringing and I was coming back into the bathroom and just that quick a, t a roll of toilet paper was already in the toilet just that quick just that quick at the blink of an eye it was already he had already gotten off the toilet roll of toilet paper in the toilet you know so I come in and I look at him and I said son this is something that we do not do you know, I didn't yell, I didn't scream, I didn't give him this face, you know, um, but I did tell him, this is not something that we do, you know, we come in the potty so that you can sit here. And so what I did is I picked him up, I put him back on the potty and I said, you sit here to potty. He has to be a big boy and you have to potty, you know, and then I left him there for another two minutes, three minutes, and then we got off, we washed our hands, and we walked out. You know, um, another instance was that um, he had an accident in his big boy undies, and it was not number one, it was number two. <laughs> um, and uh, he took them off, and he hid them. And so um, when I, I asked him, where are your undies? And um, he looked at me and he shrugged his shoulder. And I was like, no, I said, we, we need to find them. Let's go find your undies. And so he took me to the vicinity of where they were. And when I found them and saw that he did have an accident, I told him, I said, this is not what we do. You know, and so I picked them up. And um, I took him by the hand and I said, this is what we do. And I taught, I, you know, I, I took him to through the proper channels of what he was supposed to do with that. You know, he's supposed to take them. He's supposed to, you know, take the stuff out or he's supposed to bring them to mommy. Bring it to mommy and let mommy know. Mommy will not be upset with you because you had an accident. We are potty training. I understand, you know. So he knew that he could come to me with that and not have that um, fear of coming to me. So um, that, um, that helped him for future accidents. So he knew and had that comfort level to be able to come to mommy without fear. So yes, definitely be patient, keep a sense of humor, um, smile, and learn to laugh about it. <laughs> okay. All right, resources. Um, there are many wonderful resources available to parents and children who are potty training. Um, if you have any questions or would like, like to learn more about potty training or about uh, about your child development, you can call our office at Families Helping Families. Our contact number is 337-436-2570. Um, or you can email us at info at fhfswla.org. Um, we have a lending library. But right now, due to the virus, our office is um, closed um, <clears throat> to the public. But um, I do have some books on potty training that I am able to mail out. If you are interested in any, um, you can always call me and say, hey, China, um, I'm interested to find out what type of resources you have in potty training. Um, <clears throat> and we can talk about it. Um, cause what I could do is I could mail out some of those, um, books for the, from the lending library, um, with a self-addressed envelope. And then whenever you're done with that particular book, then you can mail that book back to me. 
um, because we want you to get the resources that you need, even though we're in, you know, we're, we're in a pandemic. We do not want our doors to be closed to you. Um, <clears throat> any other type of resources that I can help you with, by all means, like I said, um, I think it's the next slide that will have my contact info. <clears throat> I also have some uh, some pamphlets and some brochures here on some potty training tips um, that I can also mail out to you as well. And also um, the cdc.gov. Um, there's um, on their website, there is a link for potty training and there's, there's some good information on their um, website as well for potty training. Um, so, those are some good resources. <clears throat> Here is my contact info. Um, as I stated, we are at, uh, we're here in Lake Charles. Our address is 2927 Hodges Street, um, Lake Charles, Louisiana, 70601. Um, the phone number is 337-436-2570. Um, and here is my email address. Um, so if y'all have um, any additional questions um, that I may not be able to get to today, or if there's any questions that you may think of later, then you are free to email me at this email address. And like I said, within 24 hours, I will get back with you. So with that said, let's see what we have in the chat box. Do we have any questions? One of the questions I see, should you punish your child if they have an accident? No, do not. Do not punish them. Um, encourage them as much as possible. That is one of the things that, um, that we had talked about earlier with um, be patient and um, um, keep make sure to maintain your humor um, because we, whether we realize it or not, um, we are asking them to learn something and to um, recognize a bodily function that they have never, ever had to recognize before, ever. They've never had to realize that they needed to go to the bathroom. They never had to think about those things ever before. So um, we, I, I do not recommend punishment. Um, I, what I do recommend is that you talk to them and that you bring them to the potty whenever they have an accident and show them the proper way um, or the, what they should be doing, not what they should not be doing. Thank you, China. And I see another question. <clears throat> this is about vacation or during vacation time. Okay. On vacation or during vacation time, did you keep the same potty routine or did you make adjustments or, you know, what things were different when you went on vacation? Okay, if you know that you have a vacation schedule before your plans to potty, um, then I will probably wait until after vacation. Because if you remember in one of the slides, they talked about like life events or things that was going on in your life to where you had to give focus. So if you know that you're planning to go on vacation, then I would wait to potty train after vacation. But if you have been potty training over a period of time and you plan on going on vacation, yes, keep your schedule. Always keep your schedule. No matter what is going on, always keep your schedule. Any others? How long do you have them sit on the potty at a time? Just five to 10 minutes? Yes, five to 10 minutes. Um, they always suggest that uh, long periods of time is not recommended because it discourages the child from going to the potty. Um, if they're in the bathrooms too long, 
then they're not going to want to continue going to the bathroom. So um, I would say 10 minutes. Um, that is the, um, the schedule that I use was 10 minutes. Um, on certain days, um, I would even go 12 minutes. Um, but I would never go longer than 12 minutes. Um, 10 to 12 minutes was like the longest that I would go. Um, but five, five minutes was never enough. And uh, 15 minutes was always too long. So that's why I would, I would do 10 to 12 minutes. And how long should the interval between trips be in general? And would you suggest a different interval for a three-year-old child with autism? What do you mean? What do that person mean by trips of intervals? The how long is the interval between trips? Like spaces, like uh, you mentioned, t every two hours. So should oh, yeah. it be every two hours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, the trip between saying. bathroom visits. It it really depends on your particular child because every individual is different. Um, every every individual is different. Every child is different. So you have to kind of learn your baby's elimination process. Um, like I said um, throughout the webinar, I know they, they suggest in the beginning 20 to 40 minutes, but I knew that my baby could go a little longer and my child had autism. He could go a little longer um, than 40 minutes his elimination process was like an hour and a half to two hours. So that's why I did every two hours. Um, but it really depends on your child's elimination process. So that's something that you kind of have to watch while you're changing diapers. So if you see that you're changing diapers every 30 minutes, then I would take my baby to the bathroom every 30 minutes. But if you see that you're changing diapers every four hours, then I would probably take my baby to the bathroom every two hours. So it just kind of depends on your child's eliminations process. Is there a certain period of time of the year that might be better or easier for uh, young children to learn potty training? Um. I would usually say summer. Um, they don't have as many holidays. We're not as distracted in the summer. Um, the only thing that a lot of parents typically do in the summer is go on vacations. Um, so, but yeah, you know, typically throughout the year, um, we're celebrating holidays or we have um, life events and things going on. Um, I know uh, um, towards the end of the year, we have Thanksgiving, we have Halloween, we have Thanksgiving, we have Christmas. So that will probably be the worst time to potty train <laughs> because then you're, you, you know, a, a lot of people travel for the holidays or if they're not traveling, um, they're shopping for the holidays. If they're not shopping, they're cooking for the holidays um, or they're expecting family in for the holidays. So, you know, I always suggest that, um, where you have the least amount of activities going on is the best time to potty train. Um, Cause remember for daytime potty, it is uh, two to three weeks just to get basics, six to eight weeks to be fully potty trained. That's just for day. And then um, four to eight months for night. So, yeah, you're going to wow. need time in there. Uh, can, can you, uh, you said, you mentioned like books was uh, important. Do, can you remember a book or do you, maybe this is a better question. Do you like get children's books about potty training uh, and then give them to your child to read or that's not what you do? 
No, I didn't um, because I didn't want um, my baby to be overwhelmed um, because I was already taking him to the potty every two hours. And then I was talking to him about pottying throughout the day. So I didn't want to overwhelm him with potty, 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 potty. So that time that he was on the potty, I gave him things that he was actually interested in. So he loved music. So I gave him, you know, music to listen to. Um, he loved to color. So I gave him coloring books. Um, he loved books and he loved pop-up books. So I got a lot of different pop-up books. He liked books that, um, that um, were interactive where uh, the eyes would move or um, the tail would move, you know. So I got him a lot of those types of books so that he was actually enjoying himself while he was in the bathroom. So that he was focused on the enjoyment of going to the bathroom and not focused on the daunting task of what he had to do while he was in the bathroom. And when you begin uh, training, do you put your child in underwear at all times or do you alternate? What do you no, recommend? From the time they get up until the time they go to bed, they're in underwear. Um, and, and that's because we're breaking <coughs> up daytime potty and nighttime potty. So if we're focusing just on daytime potty, from the time they get up until the time they go to bed, they're in underwear. So that's why we say buy a lot of underwear because in the beginning, they will have accidents. Um, so you, you will be changing pretty often. Um, <clears throat> and then um, two hours before bedtime, I would stop um, drinks and then put my baby to bed with a diaper on. Um, and even though you have not started the nighttime pottying, I would still stop for two hour drinks so that whenever you start the nighttime pottying, they're already trained with no longer drinking drinks two hours prior to going to bedtime. Thank you, Jenna. Um, one last uh, attempt for questions, if you have any. Please put them in the chat box. So wait, we'll wait a few seconds for that if you have any. Um, and thank you, China, for all the different resources and tips and things that you shared with us about potty time and potty time training. Um, it was very, very good information. Um, also, at the end of this webinar, when we close, there will be a survey to pop up. Please complete that. And all attendees that are on, we will email you the handouts that she has. Um, and if you're on the phone, you may want to contact our office to make sure that you can get the handouts. Again, our phone number is there, code 337-436-2570. And the email address for our office, the main email is info at fhfswla.org and we will be glad to email you the uh, handouts or materials that we have to share if you're on the phone. We don't want to leave you out. Um, and I'm looking at the chat box and I don't see any more questions. Again, we'd like to thank everyone for attending this webinar. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. And thank you, China, for your information and sharing it with us. Uh, have a nice day. And we look forward to y'all getting on other webinars we have. Please check our Facebook page or our website for any upcoming webinars that we have. And thank you again for attending. Bye-bye.